Hey guys, quick video again today, but this time about the server. I'm planning on doing a kind of finishing off video with all kinds of small bits that were left for doing for the server. As you can see, it's actually not in the back anymore because I moved it. But more about that in another video. This video is about discussing well, basically the only issue I encountered while building and running this server. And that has to do with the Seagate Ironwolf 10 terabyte drives I was using. So let's look at what happened together and run through what I encountered. And I'm happy to report there is now a fix. So to start off, as far as I know, this problem that I encountered only happens with the Seagate Ironwolf 10 terabyte Pro and non-pro versions. To start off the story in the beginning, I've been using these drives for a few years now. I have some in my DIY cloud project, I had some in my old server, I have some in some other servers I've been running, and I've generally been very happy with these drives. They provide a great balance between being a 7200 RPM drive while also being very power efficient. But as I said, I've been using these drives for a few years now, so when I went to build the new server, I wanted to use eight of those. I already had two, so I purchased six new ones. And all was fine. I made the ZFS pool and used the mirror, as you could see, and I started to fill that with my data. But once I had moved over about 20 terabytes, a ZFS status looked like this. I was getting random read, write, or checksum errors on the drives, and there basically was no reason for that. Especially because before I use any hard drive I buy, I use HDAT2, which is a little DOS tool, and a separate PC, and I let it sit there for about 13 to 14 hours to verify each sector. So I knew these drives were good, it didn't have any bad sectors, and there shouldn't be any issues with these drives, and I actually haven't had any issues with my Iron Wolf drives for the past few years. But I did have a friend which also had a weird issue. And basically that weird issue was the same. Now and then, sometimes a read, write, or checksum error would pop up. And if you then scrubbed the pool or did something else, everything was fine. And suddenly a few months later, it was back again. And now for some reason, seemingly... I also have this problem. Very strange. So I started digging into this and especially using the ixsystems.com forum, which is the forum of FreeNAS basically, uh, there were more reports of people using Iron Wolf drives which were having these issues. But it was very intermittent. Some people were using them, everything was fine, like I used to belong to, and some other people were using them and couldn't use them without any errors. Looking at ZFS, I mainly saw ZFS delay messages in ZFS or ZPool events. And using DMessage, I saw that basically the controller at some point would try to write to the drive and it basically would stop responding until the controller reset the drive and then everything was fine again. Of course, ZFS would report an error on that, but after that it could read the data again and repair it just fine. So I knew these drives were okay. I was 100% certain of that because I tested them all extensively. Looking further, I found that one person was able to basically fix his problem by disabling NCQ or write cache. Now this was an operation you need to do every boot cycle, but you can script it and then he said he never had an error again. So that was an option. Disabling NCQ or write cache would well, lower performance. Actually, writecast would make it more secure because then ZFS would know it was actually written instead of it instead of being in the cache of the drive. But okay, but eh, it's kind of a, more of a workaround than an actual fix. I also started testing and uh, discussed with my friend and the people online. I made a whole forum post about this, which will be linked in the description. I also wrote an article about this. If you don't want to watch the video. Uh, that's also linked in the description, but I asked people for their experience and I haven't been able to figure it out. It could be LSI Evago controller related. I'm running the newest IT firmware, which uh, 20.0070, I believe. Um, but 
I'm not sure if I had it on my motherboard ports too. Uh, I just knew I had it on my LSI ports, which I was using now, which I couldn't really get around. But this NCQ or disabling write cache thing was interesting because after Googling for a long time, I wound up at a post over at the Synology forums where they were discussing the same problem. But this was a little bit different. This was Synology disabling write cache on these drives in their firmware. So that kind of correlated. There was an actual issue with these drives in certain configurations because as I said, I have other configurations running with the same firmware, no issues. But it gets even better. Seagate has recently released a new firmware. Instead of SC60, they now have SC61 to resolve this issue with Synology. And if the Synology now detects this SC61 firmware on these 10 terabyte pro or non-pro drives, it will re-enable write cache again. And I was like, haha. That looks interesting. So downloaded that firmware. It's still not listed on the Seagate websites. I tried to talk to support about this, but I, you never talk to the right guy and you know, uh, but they are Seagate download links. They're just direct download links to this firmware. And I downloaded SC61. It's a little USB installer you can use to create a bootable USB stick. And there is a short procedure to flash the firmware. So. I proceeded to do this with a single disk. I had to do this in a separate PC because I don't think it m knew how to handle my AMD motherboard or LSI ports, but I have a spare PC and that's fine. And I did a single disk, inserted it back into the ZFS pool and the, did a ZFS scrub to make sure no data was lost. And well, scrub completed, no issues. So the procedure is non-destructive. Still, I had backups or original originals of all my data since I had just moved it. So I immediately just did all of my drives, put it back up, did another scrub, ZFS found no issues. So for me at least, this firmware upgrade was without data loss. And well, we're now about a month later that I've moved from SC60 firmware to SC61 and that I created my IX Systems forum post and asked some other people who were willing, of course, to do the same. Whole sounding result, zero issues anymore. I have zero read, zero write, zero checksum issues, no more ZFS delays, no messages in dmessage. Performance is still excellent. I mean, these are 7200 RPM drives and I run them in a mirror to get the most performance out of them. And well, I, it, it just works perfectly now. So it kind of leaves me to say, it's great that there's now a fix for this. It's kind of sad that Synology basically had to force this issue. These drives have been available since 2017, and there's basically been no official fix for this until now. And even if you look at your serial number on the website and ask if there's new firmware, it's still not official, I guess. But as I said, me and some others on the forum thread, and uh, I'll have my post and the forum thread link linked in the description, I've been running this for over a month now with with zero issues. So if you have 10 terabyte Seagate Ironwolf drives, I would definitely recommend checking this firmware out, especially if you're not running ZFS, but maybe you're getting odd behavior or the drives are getting dropped from your RAID array sometimes or stuff like that. This could be the issue. Now, this issue is very vague because as I said, I haven't been able to verify if it's the controller or why in my old system on the same LSI card it worked and in the new system it doesn't. So I think only a small fraction of people were affected by this, but at least there's now a fix with no downside, or at least not as far as I've been able to detect. So it sucks that they needed a firmware update, but with the firmware update, these drives are perfectly fine. And Looking out there in the market, these drives are 7200 RPM, low power usage, low noise, and the price is pretty good too. And basically, if you want uh, low power usage, high performance drives, like I basically wanted for my home server, there's nothing else out there because competing brands, which I've actually had worse experience with over the years, but um, they're mostly not 7200 RPM. So I still love these drives. They're excellent. I can still recommend them. It just kind of sucks that this firmware update took this long. So uh, I hope this helps you. Let's uh, 
keep the discussion going in the comments or maybe in the forum thread. And uh, more server videos are coming up. I'm going to round off the series, which I basically started with the current server and mostly about the har hardware and performance and stuff like that. And then after that, I've basically gone a bit beyond that because I currently have a Proxmox cluster running for certain functionality I wanted to test out. Now, I'll probably be doing a video series about that later on. Um, but yeah, stay subscribed for that. And uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.